On today's show, how a gold mine is mining the sun, the education gets smart, Australian standards has gone crazy, and I've got some very important information about the Victorian home battery scheme. That and more right after this. G'day and welcome, my name's Chris and well, this is your show about what's happening in Australia and you know, sometimes around the world, about things like technology in renewable sustainability and the like. And well, today is very topical and hey, if you've subscribed or you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing, you get what I mean. All right, now, first up, check out this next generation modular classroom developed by Hive. They're an Australian company who are located in Sydney, New South Wales. Now, to us Aussies, portables or module classrooms, maybe that's a new word, are not new, but these ones have been engineered to be both extremely well insulated. They feature LED downlights, a 10 kilowatt solar array, and a Tesla battery. Why? Well, you see, most classrooms consume about 3,800 kilowatts per hour, <laughs> 3,800 kilowatts of energy per year to run. And these, these classrooms generate 10,000 kilowatts yeah, you heard me. So they're so efficient, they actually um, not only support themselves, but they can also run several other classrooms at the same time. And it gets better. In terms of savings, these like modular classrooms save well, schools and taxpayers about $3,000 per year in running costs. Currently, three of these classrooms are being trialed at St. Christopher's Catholic Primary School in Holsworthy, and um, Dapto High in Dapto, both in New South Wales. And Hive is working towards rolling out more classrooms in South Australia and New South Wales, as well as retrofitting existing classrooms right now. So this is great technology and I'm really proud that's an Australian development. Next, a WA gold mining company is harnessing the sun's power to power its operations. This will actually be the first Australian mine to be powered by a wind, solar, battery and gas microgrid. Located in a remote region of WA, the Agnew Gold Mining Company has received co-funding from the Australian Renewable Energy Agency of the tune of like $13.5 million to create this microgrid which is hoped to provide about 55-60% to 60 of its energy requirements with occasionally it might even meet all of it. So, you know, sun, it's the outback. Yeah, so details. They're installing 80 megawatts of wind turbines, a 10,000 panel 4 megawatt solar farm, a 30 megawatt battery storage system, plus, well, sadly, a 16 megawatt gas turbine power station for backup. Now, given that this is like in a remote region of Australia, I'm going to give this section a bit of a pass because, well, you know, they need to actually prove the technology like with these renewables. And you know what? As soon as they see that it actually can do a good job and provide what they need, they'll get more batteries, they'll get more solar. It's cheaper than actually installing like a gas peaker plant. So this is great news. Okay. Now, are you hoping to install a home battery? You know, these ones like from uh, Tesla and LG. They're designed to store energy that you're created from your solar panels so that you can use it anytime you want, maybe at night or during an outage. And the benefit, you might like save some money or be able to sell your stored power at a higher rate to your electricity provider if they allow it. Not all of them do, by the way. So, I want you to commit to memory this following code. ASNZS5139. That's the code used by Australian standards to denote what is required of industry to make and install battery systems. So, in case you didn't know, a lot of things that we use and take for granted are quietly governed by Australian standards. Like, seriously, just about everything. Agricultural, medical, electrical, you name it. They have a standard for something that you and I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So, currently more than two years in the making, this draft standard 5139 could make the prospect of installing a home battery almost near impossible. So, let me just roll back briefly to 2017, where the first draft was um, required like home batteries to be installed in a standalone bunker style building, which would have effectively stopped almost all installations in Australia. 
Thankfully, some very clever people told SA that this is overzealous, unnecessary, and to try again. So fast forward to 2019, and they've published another draft, and this time it's um, better. Now, you tell me, and look, please do put your comments down below. I would like to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this? Are you ready? So first up, the battery must be 600 millimeters clear of an opening, door, window, or any other item like an electrical box, gas meter, water heater, you name it. Also, if the battery has been installed onto like an adjoining habitable wall, that is someone who's behind that, they must use compressed sheeting behind it, extending 600 meters either side of the, of the actual battery, as well as 900 millimeters above the top of the battery. So if you install like a Tesla Powerwall 2, that's 1150 millimeters high, that means that these compressed sheets must extend to like a total height of more than two meters above it. So it might be doable, doable for some people, but you might need to install your battery on the floor, which is something I don't want to do because, well, you know, what if it gets some water damage, you know, a bit of ingress. Australian standards, like, why are you doing this? I, I, I really don't get it. Now, is it because home batteries are erupting into flames and burning houses down? Of course, the media loves a good FUD story and they'll jump on any battery fire. Look, be it a house, be it a car, any new technology, which is often scrutinized way more than any other fire that is caused by like maybe a heater, petrol, natural gas. You get the idea. So how many battery house fires have there been worldwide? Well, I looked and unfortunately, I can't give you a solid answer on this, but I can safely say that in Australia, home batteries do not even register on the top 10 list of house fires. Now, keyboard warriors out there will be like, yeah, Chris, there are very few installed in Australia. So, duh, with, with the low numbers and high fire count, they should be on the top 10 list, if not banned. Well, worldwide, I can definitely tell you, there's actually hundreds of thousands of home batteries already installed and not burning houses down. And you don't see many other civilized regions of the world like Europe and America proposing these nanny state regulations for no good reason. I mean, come on, Australian standards. This is, this is so annoying. But my awesome viewers, I have some good news. This standard hasn't yet been passed. So if you're thinking about pulling the pin and getting a battery, maybe sooner is better than later. Or conversely, get out there now, measure up your space, use these specs and make sure that what battery you install in the future will be able to actually go there. All right. Now, before I get onto my final story for today, have you considered subscribing? Yeah, it really does help the channel and I really do appreciate, you know, all the support that everyone gives me and, you know, keep all these great little comments coming. Can't say that enough. <laughs> okay, now, last story for today and this one definitely falls into... Long as I don't break these okay, now, promises about what our, our politicians are and aren't doing in a space of renewable technologies such as, well, batteries. So, Victorian viewers out there, listen up. If you're thinking about getting a home battery storage system, this is very important. Now, late last year, the Victorian state Labor government um, promised <laughs> that it would, if, if a retained office, it will kick off from July 1 this year a subsidy program to help homeowners, homeowners with existing solar panels to subsidize the purchase of a home battery. Now, you know the ones I've talked about before, right? Those same things. So. Back in late 2018, they pledged $40 million to 10,000 households to help cut their power bill and, well, provide network stability at times of high demand. And they said that, well, a few things, household values must be less than $3 million, fair enough, and that only occupier's income must be less than $180,000. And that they're going to cap it at $4,838 in the first year, tapering down to $3,714 by 2026, all right? on first appearances, looks good, right? Now, if you were like me, you would have registered. In fact, more than 9,000 people did. And well, sadly, promise versus reality is very different. Details of the scheme have now emerged in this last week, and well, I'm worried, and I think it will actually encourage price hikes from suppliers. 
So what's to go? Well, the dollar amount is still the same. With the soul of Victoria, that's like the government agency running this scheme, they're stating that from 2019-2020, up to half the price of a system is capped at a maximum of $4,838 rebate, but only 1,000 rebates will be available. Oh, and you must live in one of these suburbs. Wait, what? What, what happened to the 10,000 grants? And um, what about those who want to do this and don't live in one of these suburbs? Well, I guess you're going to have to wait. And I hope that maybe your suburb is next and that the scheme doesn't disappear, which, you know, these things can happen. Perhaps next financial year, they'll do more homes at a slightly lesser amount though. So who knows? But I think this rationing is both a good idea and, well, a bad one. First, well, all it means is the scheme will be cut and slowly rolled out and like, they will test it, they will put corrective measures in place because, well, you know, a complex energy system like this with, you know, retailers, providers, consumers, all getting along nicely is a very hard equation. And goodness knows, there have been some very poorly run government incentive programs in the past. And we don't want to relive those things, do we? No. So, cautious first steps, great. But, Spreading the program over time and decreasing the grant on the belief that battery costs will go down is a big mistake. A fundamental principle of supply and demand is if you have a limited quantity of something, you can, in general, increase the cost to consumers. The result? Well, suppliers like LG, Tesla and installers, they will raise costs to consumers. Conversely, as I've said many times on this channel before, Battery chemistry is changing and improving all the time. So I anticipate energy density to increase whilst cost to consumers remain the same or more than likely increase. So take for example the Tesla Powerwall 1. Its 7 kilowatt hour battery costs $9,000. The current Tesla Powerwall 2 has got 14 kilowatt hours and $12,749. That's double the capacity but a 41% price increase. So with the battery scheme decreasing its subsidies over to homeowners over time, that will mean less value to them. And well, is that fair? The 1,000 who are lucky enough to install now, they'll benefit most, but conversely, those who install later will benefit with more energy storage. So what's more important to you? Cost of storage or more storage? <laughs> For me and my family, we average about 12 kilowatt hours per day in electricity use. We have LED lights, we have energy efficient products, and we have insulation everywhere. So, what am I doing? Well, I'm fortunate to be in one of those suburbs that I can actually access the scheme this year. So, I've actually started the process of getting a Powerwall 2. And yes, I've heard rumors that a Powerwall 3 is coming soon. And will it feature maybe 2170 uh, battery cells in the Model 3? They're like 20% more efficient and energy dense than the uh, Model S and X batteries. So, will we see a 16.78 kilowatt version? May test the double the storage capacity, like a 28 hour kilowatt battery pack. That'd be awesome. That will power most homes through winter, including an EV. But will that also come with a 41% price hike? That would mean at least $18,000 before you get the installation, which as Tesla has told me already, is $2,000. So what will I do? Well, I'm being upfront with Tesla and I'm telling them that one, I want to access a battery scheme grant, but two, to go as slow as they can. Elon Musk disclosed in the 2019 annual shareholder meeting that Tesla will host an investor battery and drive chain day in August or September this year. And what that will um, mean is, well, the rumors are that they're going to be making their own batteries and not using Panasonic's from 2020 onwards when that contract expires. And that with the acquisition of Maxwell uh, battery technologies earlier this year, they'll incorporate super capacitors into their cars to capture energy during regen and provide even greater range to their cars. But heck, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. What would you do? Can you access the battery scheme? Are you going to pull the pin? If you can't, I want to hear, oh, excuse me, I want to hear from you. Uh, am I mad? I am? Anyway, I will keep you up to date on this project. And if I do follow through and get it all installed, I'll definitely document so you can understand what it's actually like. Okay. I'm just in the very first stages at the moment. 
Tesla has got all the information they need about our solar array, our inverter, the, um, uh, what do you call it? the uh, box, you know, the electricity box in the uh, garage. Oh, that's funny. It's not called that. Um, and uh, we're waiting for a site inspection. And after that, I'll sign some papers and then we get our scheme number, um, which will guarantee the, you know, the grant and then the battery comes later on. So as I understand it from them, this whole process is gonna take two to three months anyway, which I'm hoping it does because you know what? Even August, September, Tesla does announce a newer, greater Powerwall 3 at the same price, hopefully, hopefully. I'm kidding myself, but anyway, um, I'd rather go for the newer technology with newer batteries just because I figure that they're probably better, right? Anyway. Enough for today. Hope you've really enjoyed this video. And again, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Put your comments down below. I'd like to hear from you. And if you do nothing, stay clean, stay clean, stay green, stay cream. Oh my gosh. <laughs> stay cream. Oh my gosh. Stay clean, stay green. Ah, <sighs> what was that?